Hi Card Making Friends, welcome back. It's Sandy McIver here and today I am playing with Spellbinders Stitch Die of the Month. It's called Stitched Floro Foco Card Front and we're going to make a card with it, obviously. There are three parts to the die set. You can use them all or just pieces to create your cards. I've cut mine from Mint Cardstock, Purple Mist and Lilac Blossom. I like to add depth and color to my pieces before I stitch by adding some ink blending. Today I am using Pine Needles, Rustic Wilderness, and Wilted Violet Distressed Oxide inks. For the small round background pieces, I am using the Pine Needles in a circular motion, just adding some deeper green to the center of each of those little circles. And these little tiny round blending brushes are perfect for this. The second one is the Rustic Wilderness, and I'm changing brushes, and I'm going to use a upward flicking technique to start at the base of the leaf and pull the ink up. And I'm going about halfway, but keeping the darker part at the bottom. And then at the top and the bottom, there's two little tiny leaves. You want to do that as well. So moving over to the flowers, starting with the large one, I'm using Wilted Violet on both of them. And just, again, the flicking technique, starting at the bottom and flicking up, and just work your way around. And same with this pretty little center. To this, I'm going to add a waterfall background piece and then these are how the flowers are going to lay over top. Okay, that's my color scheme for today. For the uh, stitching, I'm going to be using DMC Cotton 552, 520, 208, and 988. And that darker purple is, um, I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to use uh, for the small center of the flower. I'm using the number 24 needles and let's get stitching. I'm going to start with the background and I'm going to start with the 520 for the dark back the green and I'm going to show you how I like to tie a knot wrap it around my finger and then just push and it rolls up till you get this little tiny knot you want to cut the tip off and we are going to tape this to the back of the card so that it doesn't pull through the circle because the knot is actually uh, smaller than the circle in the background. So I take a piece of scotch tape, a really small piece, and then just snip off a little tip. And this is one of the many reasons I love the Spellbinder scissors. They're non-stick. So none of that glue gets on my scissors. Okay, so hold, push it down, make sure that it's good and secure. And now we can start stitching. And it's just a straight stitch. You're going to come up through the center and then down through the outside edge and work your way around the circle. Very straightforward. And I use my finger on the back to hold everything in place. It also helps to um, stop the thread from getting knotted on the back. Okay, so uh, this is at real time. So this is how fast I stitch. I'm working my way. I'm going to work all the way through an entire one for you because I want to show you how I tie off the back. Okay. Basically, this stitch is all the way through uh, this entire card front and the flower. It's just some of the stitches are longer than the other ones. These ones are pretty short, so this works up quite quickly. I did this entire card in less than two hours plus the video, so it doesn't really take that long to make this card. Okay, and I'm at the end, so I'm going to turn it over, and I like to run it through two or three of the pieces on the background, and then through the loop, okay? And then I cut with a little tiny tail. And when I get ready to put the card together, I'm going to make sure I put a big blob of glue on top of that so that it uh, doesn't come undone. So I'm doing the same thing with the lighter green and I'm going to show you uh, the stitches, how I like to add them to these longer leaves. So again, I'm taping my piece off on the back and I'm starting at the top and I'm going to work my way down, but we're going to do a solid stitch. Got a piece of tape stuck on my finger. Okay, so I'm going down into the next stitch, then I'm going to come up the stitch afterwards, and I'm going to go backwards to fill in the gap. Okay, I think, I believe this is called the running stitch. Okay, and so then I'm going to come up in the one that I came up into last time, and then go down into the next one, come up in the bottom of the one after, 
and then stitch up into the previous one and it makes a solid stitch all the way down the center of the leaf. Okay, so just going to continue to the end of this leaf and then we're going to work our way from the bottom up one side and then down the other adding the angled stitches on the leaves. And if you look at the die really closely, it does a little tiny indent so that you can see that the stitches are on an angle. I'm just showing you them there. Okay, so I'm going to start in the bottom right hand corner and go up one stitch to the center. And you're going to do that all the way up the right side and then all the way down the left side. Just following the little stitch guidelines that is um, you're stitching right over them actually, the little indents that are in there. They've embossed them slightly to show you which way to, to stitch. Okay, and sometimes you can't find the hole. <laughs> Again, I'm holding my fingers on the back. I'm holding the thread and I'm holding it taut and I, with two fingers and it also stops it from getting knotted in the back. And I'm making these threads a little bit longer so that I can do a couple of leaves before I have to uh, reload my needle. Okay, so when you get to the top, you have to go to the first stitch on the left-hand side and then back through to the top. And again, I can't find the hole. Okay, into the top. And now we're working our way down the left-hand side. If I can find that hole. This is going to be a really pretty card. I love these colors together. I think that's the worst part of this card is trying to decide which colors to make. I actually made an entire other card and I did it all in purple and navy blue and I absolutely hated it when I was done. So it got tossed in the bin. That just happens sometimes. Okay, we're almost done. And again, I'm going to do the same thing on the back. I am going to run through two or three of the stitches from the back and then tie off the knot and leave a small tail. And again, I'll add a pile of glue to it um, once I'm ready to glue the back down and then that will stop any of the threads from coming loose. You want this to be professional and pretty when you're done. Okay, and then just snipping off that tail. And so you're going to go all the way around and do this to the entire there it is up close for you so you can see I like the dark and the light combination okay so here it is all finished hopefully I can get my camera to zoom in for you nice subtle detail for the background and it looks beautiful on top of the waterfall and I decided on gold amazingly so the DMC gold thread that you can get from Spellbinders this is lovely I decided I wanted a little bling. And for the flower, I did all the long stitches, but I wanted to show you that you once you finish going around one way in the circle, pull your thread back up through and come up at the bottom and then go into the one on the right-hand side and create an angle stitch. And this is going to double the stitches on this flower and it kind of it ends up making a little diamond design, which is really really pretty. I thought this was a nice addition to this. Sorry, my camera keeps going out of focus. I can't figure out what to focus on. There, there we go. And again, a long thread, sometimes a pain in the behind. Okay, so I've got my finger right beside where the next hole is, and I'm also holding the previous thread taunt so that I don't have any gaps in my thread and any loose threads. And you're just going to work your way all the way around this flower in this manner to get those cool little points. Isn't that nice how they turned out? It looks really pretty when the card's finished. Okay, my stitching's all done. It's time to put the card together. I have a four and a quarter by 11 piece of hammer mill white, scored and folded at five and a half. I'm adding some adhesive to the back of my piece of waterfall, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, a quarter of a piece of cardstock. And I'm using my score buddy, up in that left hand corner to keep everything nice and straight when I add my top on and then take a nice sharp pair of scissors and trim off anything that hangs out. There's the needle I was looking for 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I lost that needle. <laughs> these, <laughs> these scissors are magnetic and it's stuck to my scissors. Okay, so I'm trimming off that little overhang that I got going on with my card base. 
want it nice and pretty and looking professional. Okay, we're going to be using that again in a sec, but we're going to glue down this back piece. And obviously with all the stitching that we've been doing, it's not very flat. Okay, so we need to add a, a large amount of glue. I'm using a really sticky glue and I'm putting a lot of glue on the back of all the stitch pieces. As I said previously, I don't want those tails to come undone. And then I'm going around the edge over all of my stitching and the center of the flower because you want that glued down as well. And then just zip down to the other side. And you also want something heavy to put on this to hold it down so that it actually does stick. So you'll see that I have a couple of pretty heavy acrylic handles that I'm going to be putting on top of this. And then some additional ones when we do the three layers of the flower to put it together. Oh, and I added a layer to the flower. Okay, so find a spot where you can pick it up but you don't get glue all over your fingers. And again, I'm going to use the corner of the score buddy just to line everything up. I find it's much easier to do it this way. And because I use the liquid glue, I do have a couple of minutes to fiddle with this, a couple seconds to fiddle with this to get it on there nice and straight. Wipe off any glue that's flowing out. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I love this color combination, gotta tell you. It's a pretty one. Okay, and I'm going to just move this over out of the way. Put those heavy acrylic handles on top. Give it a good push and we'll move on to the flower. So here's the extra piece. When I got the centerpiece finished and stitched and I layered them, isn't that pretty with all those little points sticking up? Uh, there was that great big bald spot that showed up and I didn't like it. And so I grabbed my circle dies and picked one that was a little bit bigger than that centerpiece and I cut it out of gold to match the metallic thread that I used in the center and it worked out perfectly. So again, I'm going to use a, a huge amount of glue to glue this down because it's not flat and I'm gluing it onto a shiny surface so it likes to slide around. So you gotta be careful to get it in place. And then that piece is going to go on top of our base. So pile more glue. Line this up and get everything centered. I need to move that center piece around just a little bit. Take your time, you do have a few seconds. This glue doesn't dry very quickly. And then again, I've got three acrylic handles on that one and I'm gonna walk away and let that dry. I went and made lunch so I know this is really dry. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, now it's time to put the flower onto the card. So again, huge amount of glue. I'm not going to glue the petals on the side because I want them to stick up a little bit to add a little bit of dimension. But I am just going to lay that down there. And again, I'm going to flip a whole bunch of acrylic handles on top of it. And uh, this is going to keep it all flat and let it dry. For my sentiment, I decided on the Glimmer Sentiments for Every Day, and I already had some uh, um, glimmered and cut out, so I'm using this one. A big hello from me to you. The worst part is trying to figure out where to put it. I really didn't want to cover up that pretty flower, so I decided to put it at the bottom. And I like that I did it in the gold act. It's polished brass, it's not gold. I find that it shows a little bit better in the polished brass and it matches the center of my flower because it's all blingy and gold. Adding more blingy and gold, how about gold mix color essential gems? I'm using a large one in the center of the flower and I'm using the lighter of the two. This package comes with two colors, a really, really dark one and then a light gold. And then I'm going to go to the third largest and I'm going to put one of those in the center of each of the dark green circles that we created. And this is just going to add a little bling. That's it. I don't want to add anything more to this card. I think it's beautiful. I really like how it turned out. Um, I like that little dash of gold bling. It really sets it off. 
And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Everything I have used today is listed underneath this video. There's also a link over to my blog for further details. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. I would really appreciate that. Next up, I picked a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Until next time, toodles.